Get situated. Logan, is that right? Is that right? Good evening, hey, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Logan's with us tonight, precious Logan. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And he set up the um, that portrait of the of the Last Supper, just so you could see it. It's just a a beautiful oil painting I've had, and I love it. It sits in my, over in our prayer room right behind me. Which you're looking at room right behind me, behind the doors. That's the prayer room that we've set up. Hi, Christina. Praise. Thank you for joining us. And I saw Deborah Pickering, Deborah Huggins. Hey, Deborah. Uh, Christina Oster, Brian Ranger. Okay, welcome. Come right on in. We're going to have a good time tonight. The Lord's so good. Logan's with us, and he's had a busy week at his, on his job and all, and I'm sure everybody else has too. And we've had beautiful weather here today. What was it, 80? Not it a cloud in the sky. It's perfect. And we had that bad storm that came through across the nation and just rained and rained and rained. And it's all gone. You would never know that it rained. So we're going to welcome everyone, and I think it's probably it's time to get started. Logan, thank you so much. And when you go out, I'll lock the door behind you, honey. I want to welcome everyone. And I know we're, you know, it's, it's Sunday evening. And I know people here where we live has been at the beach all day or in the yard working. It's just this time of year. But it's a wonderful time of year, springtime when everything comes alive. And I noticed Margaret Payne, I think, was on first. And Margaret, I want you to know we're praying for you, honey, and for your son, Brian that the Lord's going to rescue you too. And just, we're praying for the miraculous in your life, in Jesus' name. And all the prayer that requests to come in. And like some of some we've been praying for a long time, with David and Allison and Steve, there's some that are so precious. And if you carry the burden a long time, and I know it's time for, for you to be some kind of resolution so you can go on. And we just... Are you leaving, Logan? Not quite yet. Okay, let me know and I'll get up. Tonight, I want to just uh, try to, I, I titled it His Supper. And there's not any way in the world you can cover all of that. It's just massive. It started in Genesis and goes all the way through. And, of course, Jesus became the, the lamb. So that's where we'll be tonight. But I want to, first of all, start off by just welcoming all of you. All of you around the around the nations, those that have been clicking in around the nations during the week and, and messaging me, you I see it all. I try to pray for any name that comes up, especially if there's a prayer request. You you definitely get prayer, and I want you to know we're so grateful for every person that's following us. And we are, we're still moving up, even though you may not see the numbers because I have pages everywhere. Like some people just on one page, but we're on at least three or four, aren't we? Yes. So we're spread out, but the numbers are still good, really good. And, um, I, and I will go over those, but I want to welcome you and tell you how much we love you and appreciate you and just that you're loved. So for those that are new, because we have a lot of new people that come in every week, and, and and actually, our little YouTube is growing. I think it's almost 200 people following us back there, which I did, I just looked at that the other day. And I never, I hardly ever mentioned that. Everything that I probably have ever said back there on YouTube under Master Touch Ministry of Linda Blankenship. 
So go to MTM. You can join Master's Touch Ministry. I, they say we have 300 something. I didn't know you could join, but there's only 300 something members, but there's thousands following us. But you can be a, you can be a part of that. I didn't understand that. You can also on MTM. It's my face with the black top. The other MTMs, at Jennifer O'Neill, I have nothing to do with those. So y'all have been putting things. They're sending me you putting it, but I cannot open it up because then that gets me logged in there. Not, that's not part of who where I am. I can't take on any more pages. So remember that. If you're over there, come over to MTM with the black top and befriend me there. You can still get on there. I think it's we, there's still plenty of room for you to get on there. Okay, um, masterstouchminister.org has a warfare prayer on there you can download free, and it's very powerful. Read it out loud, put your names in it. And there's also our book is on there, Let My People Go. That's a very powerful book. See, I, I just don't want to miss, miss anything. Um, I think that's all I wanted to talk about as far as is. Okay, we're getting some more. Alina, Rebecca Quinn, hi, sweetie, and hi, Alina, and hi, Logan. Thank you. With I just thank y'all for joining in. Just pray that God doesn't, that their souls saved tonight, that souls come into the kingdom tonight. That's my whole thing in life, uh, You that you find Jesus. I was so desperate when I found him. I was so desperate, and people are desperate. He is the only answer. I tried it all. He is the only answer that can help you really get it straight because he knows it all from the from the very beginning, from the second you were conceived to right now. I don't care how desperate. Jesus knows it all, and he knows the, the pathway to get you and make you whole. So come on in and join in with us and join in this kingdom with Jesus. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like him. In Jesus' name. Okay, here I want to tell you the statistics because it's really interesting. Okay, the we reached 48% more people since the last time I was on. We re, That was a plus, and the engagement was plus 12% more. Uh, something continued was 49% more, some kind of continued something. And the net followers minus one. And y'all know that's not true because y'all are greeting new members every day. So I don't know how this all gets so messed up. But you know that because you're welcoming them. And I to try to get back there too. Um, the men, the the men are still 62.3% of the men are 37 points. So that's the first 10,000. I want to just share with you the, the countries. Uh, this is because they, they y'all are y'all are getting in touch with me. So you're hearing what I'm reading. Um, the top 10 cities in the world. You're leaving? Bye, Please honey. Have a great Bye. Night. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, you're, uh, the top 10 cities are Yvonne, Armenia, um, Anna, Narvario, Madagascar, Dali, Tima, Lesti, Calcutta, West Bengal, India. These are your top cities. Uh, Port Moresby, New Guinea, Hamilton, Ohio, uh, Ilio City, Philippines, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. His first, yeah, come on, it's one of the top 10 cities. Uh, so we've got someone in South Carolina, and is Hamilton still on there? Yes, we've got two in America on here. And now the top countries. Number one is the Philippines, India is two, United States is three, Armenia is four, Indonesia is five, Brazil is six, Madagascar is seven, Nigeria is eight, Nepal is nine, and Pakistan is ten. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful and so thankful that every life is touched, that whatever, anything I say brings life by the Spirit of God into you and into your life in Jesus' name. I've got to find a chair here. Hold on, I've got to pull a chair around here because I've had to have somewhere to drop these papers so they'll all get, I won't be able to get them straight up and get up from here. Okay. We've done that. Um, I'm welcoming anybody new coming on. We welcome you and we want you to join in with us and pray. Pray for each other. Pray. Pray for each other. Of course, we're praying for the top of the list is Israel. And I said all kind of things. I got a um, a message immediately from one of the ladies that follows us, Deborah 
Huggins immediately before it even got out that they were get, sending bombs into Israel to pray. And I put it on Facebook as soon as I got it all over the place. And people were praying. And we are praying. We're praying for peace around the world in Jesus' name. I, I just say I'm thanking the Lord for all of you. Brian, I see you. I, I'm going to make sure if I've got, I don't want to miss anybody. I'm going to go to the top and start up because once I get started, I can't get into it. Brian Ranger, Margaret Payne, Christine Oser, uh, Deborah Huggins, Deborah Pickett, Pickering, Christina, Brian, Margaret, Dr. Zoe, Cynthia Nolan Jackson, Precious Rachel Catherine, Cynthia Nolan, thank you, Leanne. Pate McGuire, Logan Bowman, Delisa Frick. Thank you, Delisa, for joining us. I pray you're blessed tonight, honey. Logan Bowman, Alina Armina, and I do have some healings to call out the Lord gave me earlier. Be Becky Quinn, Rebecca Quinn, uh, Will, Will, honey, hi. Deborah, Sonia Rourke Kuhn. Thank you, Sonia, for joining. Robin Rollins, thank you. Uh, these are some new people coming in. Uh, I see you. I will be praying for all of you when I get off in the next two days. David's on here, Leanne Marcus, and Allison Rook, and Leanne, and Will, and Brian, and Allison. And I'm going to stop there, and we're going to keep going. If you want uh, to read the book of uh, mostly of my life and miracles, it's it's let my people go. It's on on our web page, masterstouchministry dot org. It's twenty dollars, and any that's left over goes into the ministry to to bless people. So I, I want I want to tell you that because people are really being blessed reading that book, and some have been healed. We you know tonight I wanted to speak about the his supper, his supper, and how it was planned from Genesis all the way through the Bible had the Lord would give his life for us so we could take communion with him and be and and take of him partake of him. It's an incredible story from Genesis all the way through the Bible. It was planned. You you can't it's the old covenant and the new covenant. The new covenant is only one covenant, it was Jesus Christ. The old covenant had several. Actually there were seven covenants in the in the Bible. But as when it came to the new covenant it was just one. It was Jesus Christ. So we are so happy we can share him that we've he, he's found us and he's alive and we want you to know he's alive that he's just not something you've accepted but he's a vital part of your life he wants to be involved in every part of your life and when you seek him you seek him with your hard heart you're going to find him right where you want him he's looking for you to seek him he wants to be sought after he really does want to be sought after he said he wants to know you want him and oh, do we want him? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, here's what he gave me. I, let's see, we're, I'm going to pray, but let me just give you these healings. Because if you need healing tonight, in, in the supper, there's healing in communion. There is healing in communion. And I went, and in case we get a chance, because I take communion every morning, I went, and I'm going to tell you, if we get a chance, if you can, don't have, it's this grape juice, and just, um, a cracker and I break it every morning and I take communion with the Lord every morning and in the scriptures of 1st Corinthians 11 23 and Luke 22 19 I, I used to go to 1st Corinthians 11 and read that and but partake of him he's alive there is healing in communion if you've repented of your sins there is healing in communion Make sure the two things is forgiveness and pride are the two biggest enemies. They're the two biggest enemies that probably any of us will fight is forgiving those that have harmed us and we could hurt, but instead we show mercy and forgive like Jesus does. And pride, you have to make sure there's no pride in your life because if you have anything, God gave it to you. If you're beautiful, he gave that to you. So get rid of pride. Just thank him that he that he was merciful and blessed you in Jesus' name. 
Jesus is, you've got to have Jesus. I'm, I'm telling you, every one time we come home, people are being born again. You have got to know this Jesus I'm talking about. He came to set the captives free. He came to heal the sick. He came to save us for we have eternal salvation with him eternally and not in hell because there's two forces. And you can't tell me there's not hell, demons. I fight. I have been in a ministry called the Deliverance Ministry for 50 years, and I cannot even name the de demonic spirits that have been cast out of Christians. Christians, because you, listen, he comes in, he's in your soul, in your spirit, but your soul up until that point has been, most of us have been wounded, some have been trampled over, some have been thrown out, and it's that part where the enemy gets a hold, and Jesus has come to set the captives free, and he says, I've given you power of all the power of Satan, and nothing can by any means hurt you, but you've got to take the authority it is called warfare and you have to take the authority and cast them out rejection guilt regret condemnation all kinds of things unloved abandoned hated grief broken heart there's all anything you can think of where this uh, jesus came that you would have life and have it abundantly satan satan and his demonic force come to rob steal and kill Period. That's what the Word of God says, and the Word of God is true, and nothing can nothing can change it. That is the Word of God in Jesus' name. Now these are the healings, and then we're gonna pray. And and the Lord always gives me some deliverances of healings afterwards too. But when I was back there, really with with Jesus earlier, the Holy Spirit was really heavy. I heard bleeding ulcers are being healed. Bleeding houses, and that's you, you grab and say, that's mine in the name of Jesus. And we're commanding them to go and never come back in Jesus' name. Ulcerated colitis is being healed by the Spirit of Almighty God right now in Jesus' name. Ulcerated colitis. Bronchial tendinitis. I don't know that that's what the Spirit says, so that's what it is. Bronchial tendinitis. You re receive your healing. I'm, I'm releasing it to you right from the Spirit of God. Um, let's see, what is that? A herniated disc. A herniated disc is being healed. And pulmonary, 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 the lungs are being healed right now. I release that in the name of Jesus, those healings to go and flow right into you. And we close the door permanently. And we close all portals and we command you to be permanently healed in, in those areas. Permanently in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you think of people you need to forgive and all as we go along, you do that. Because I'm gonna, I will take communion with y'all later. I'll get you some water if you don't have grape juice. Uh, and get you a piece of bread. Do something. We'll, I'm hoping we can have communion together. And people will be healed. The scripture says it so it will happen in Jesus' name. As long as you ask for forgiveness and forgive everybody and let all kind of pride go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's pray and then we're going we will get started. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I am thanking you for tonight. I am thanking for you this chance for you to just use me any way you can to share your love, to share your mercy, to share your forgiveness, to share your healing, your deliverance, your love for your people, how much you loved us, that you planned this from the foundations of the world, that you would come at some point and redeem us back. Lord Jesus, how we thank you for being willing to leave glory and leave glory all of glory and come down and mix with us and be raised with us and then be spit out and killed and just killed on a cross and stripped of everything so that we could have everything. Jesus, how can we even thank you? How can we even grasp it and open our minds and our reason to grasp it all, Lord? I'm asking you to do that tonight by your spirit, Lord Jesus, that we can grasp more of this love than we've ever grasped. And that we pour it out on humanity in any way, in every way we can, so that people know that, that the people of Jesus love people in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I give you this whole thing. I ask you to open ears to hear, to open eyes to see in the Spirit. I ask you to release, if those uh, not born again, Lord, that they cry for mercy and ask for forgiveness of their sins and fill them with your Spirit. 
those that have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I've asked you, Lord, to remind them to ask you to baptize them in the Holy Spirit and keep seeking till they're baptized and they realize an, a, another level of you has come into their life. Now, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for refilling all of us, renewing all of us, quickening all of us, reviving us, restoring us in every way. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your spirit tonight, I ask you to fill us all and just fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. And you forgive us, cleanse us, and wash us in the blood. And let this be a glorious night for souls tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. It, and I, I, I gave you the scriptures for communion. And you can read those yourself. Because I do take communion every day, every morning. I very seldom miss. Healing is in communion. And also the forgiveness. You know, it tells you to forgive. It tells you to make sure you're okay, that you've asked for forgiveness. So, Because as many have died and slipped because they took it unworthily. Repent. Repent and take communion. And thank God that he forgives. The Lord forgives. He's the forgiving God, or he would have never come down. Okay, 1 Corinthians 11 is 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 one of, is the place that I go to when I'm reading communion. And, you know, sometimes, one time I even got on the Internet and looked up um, the whole process of Calvary, so it became so much more real to me. And I mean, not, not, uh, it's real to me inside, but I wanted to just follow the whole process. And a lady had, had, done a, had put on there the whole, the whole thing of communion, the crucifixion, and it was so good. It was just good. Do things like that to, in, and to encourage yourself and to co connect deeper into the things of the Spirit in Jesus' name. You know, Master Touch Ministries was founded on Isaiah. 61 and i'm going to read it because i'm releasing it on everybody that's watching me and this is what we got our 501c3 with the state of ohio and it's for every believer but this is what the lord gave my husband for this ministry and it has truly been a miraculous ministry and some of you on here follow me for years and you know a lot of the miracles the deliverances and the miracles and the salvations and so much. It's everything the scripture says almost we almost we have seen in Jesus' name. Not quite all of it, but almost. We did see a new heart and new lungs. And yeah, we did see the new heart, new lungs. I think that's called creative miracles. And some other things. Those are just things I'm okay. This is what I'm releasing to you too, because it belongs to you too if you're born again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are captive, and the opening of the prison to those that are bound. This is all about deliverance and healing. To proclaim, this is Jesus, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, which is depression, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This is also he will be glorified. And they shall build up the old waste places, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. In the name of Jesus Christ, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord, and men shall call you ministers of our God. That is for every believer. That was Jesus' ministry, and he left us here to, to, go, to carry on. We'll never be Jesus, but we're part of Each one of us will, uh, have a part in all of this. And so I, will, I release that. I release all those promises into every one of you every home every loved one every child right now release it right now into all of my loved ones my husband and all of us in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus when we talk about um communion i and the lord's supper i have to go back because we've spent a lot of time on the tabernacle and we see 
that we are the tabernacle that where he dwells now. This was all a picture of Jesus and our relationship with him. But from Genesis to now, it's all about God's plan for redemption from Genesis till Jesus came and for us to receive it after the cross, for us to receive it. So this is, and you, we, if you are born again, you are a priest unto God. Now in the old covenant, there were high priests. Aaron was the first high priest, and then his son, and then there were lesser priests. And it, when you were third, his son became when you when there were thirty, I think they couldn't be a priest until they were thirty, like Jesus. And then they could, you know, uh, Jesus started his ministry when he was thirty. So it, the whole thing is Jesus. Everything in there is, is, is a picture of Jesus Christ. You, it's just so real. But I want you to know, you have to know this if you're born again. You've got to get this in you, who you are in Christ Jesus. Because you are a priest unto God. And we are priests. So I want to read uh, Revelations 1, 5. And, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the, of the dead, and the uh, princes of the ki kings of the earth, princes of the kings of the earth, unto uh, him that loves us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests. So don't ever forget that. You don't understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Everything he paid for at Calvary belongs to us, belongs to the body of Christ. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. That's who we serve, and that's who we love, and that's who we want more of. Revelation 5, 10, and he... And he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. This is Revelation 5.10 also. I just wanted to get that out, right out front there, and you realize who you are in Christ Jesus. You're, you're not a nobody. You have a place and a call in your life. For 1 Peter 2.9 says, For you are a chosen generation. We've been a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Do you remember when he called you into the light? Do you remember when you met Jesus? I'm asking, listen, I was in the church and I will do this till I go to my grave. Do you know him? I'm, I'm saying, do you know this marvelous light? Do you know him? Not denomination, not cultural or religions, all the different religions. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. That if you know Jesus, which has, which had obtained mercy, but now have, which did not have mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And I want you to know what you obtained when you found Jesus. I looked up mercy so you would understand what happened to you the second you you asked Jesus to come in and he came in. I'm not talking about, listen, a lot. I ask and I ask. I remember asking, but I never met him. You stay with it. You keep repenting. You keep calling on him. Do you know you know him? You cannot not know him. If you know him, you know him. He's the son of God. He's the creator of it. You have to, if you meet him, you know it. I can't stress that because I was in it up to my head in, in serving, and I didn't know the master. This mercy that you know is compassion, and it means to forgive someone that you have the power to punish. This is the kind of mercy Jesus has for us. He, his mercy is compassion, and he operates he forgives us, even though he has the power to really and uh, to punish us. And this, this is what he's calling each one of us into. No matter how bad you've been hurt, no matter how it takes, it's a process working it. But he wants you to show mercy. That's who he is, and he's going to work that in us until we can, until he can get it in us right. 
it, you can, it's the power to punish or harm when you have the power to do it, but you choose mercy and compassion and forgiveness. It means forgiveness, withholding punishment. It's compassion, especially to the offender. And then I wrote down here, be kind and forgive. You might as well, because the people are in a mess. You know, your people do all kinds of stuff because the devil's working. They don't have time. They don't even realize the, the damage they've done and how they've wounded you. But because they're trying to survive themselves. So you, we just got to have mercy and forgive. The first thing of all that the Lord wants us to have is a humble spirit because none of us deserve salvation. None of us deserve being able to eat at his supper, eat, the, eat, take communion. But through him we can because it's through his mercy, his cho choice to forgive and have compassion for us. And we have to have the same thing for the brethren. I don't know why I put that there because there's nothing on that. From the beginning of time, from the beginning to time, from Adam and Eve, God planned a way to redeem his people back. From the time Adam and Eve sinned, he had already planned a way through all the old covenant, all those hundreds and hundreds of years, he planned a way to redeem his people back. And everything in there is a pathway to the cross. Everything from Genesis to Re is a pathway to the cross for Jesus. And the first thing, and it was always the blood. It was always the blood. It will always be the blood covenant. It can never change. God demanded blood for sin. And so Genesis 3, I'm just going to start there. In Leviticus 17, 11, it, it is the blood that makes atonement for sin. That was over in Leviticus. But, you know, Jesus killed, God killed those innocent animals, shed their blood to cover after his sin. It started right there. And it's never ended. It's all the way through. Everything they did was to, was a picture of, of the blood covenant. The blood covenant. Every covenant. There's seven covenants in the Bible. and and But the, uh, the old covenant had many. The new covenant is the covenant. is the blood covenant with Jesus. And then there's an everlasting covenant, which is wherever would be him forever. But the blood covenant... In the old covenant, there was a lot of covenants. There was, a, and I've got them listed, and you can look them up. And they were all blood covenants. God does everything through the blood. Life is in the blood. It started in the garden when Adam and Eve chose death instead of life, chose to do what God told them not to do, and sin ended, and it started there. And and God Himself pronounced curses. He clothed them, covered them, took them out of the garden forever, put it was a, a cherub and there's a sword there that could never enter the garden after that. But he he spoke five curses, I believe, and right in the middle is a promise that a woman would birth a seed that would redeem us back. It's right in the middle of the curses. I think there was five or six curses that he laid on them. It, let's see, the God's... Uh, this, the seed, it will be redeemed from the seed of a woman. And he told Eva, Eve that she would be the mother of all people. Adam and Eve are the mother and father of all. We're all kin back to Adam and Eve. That's where it started. They were the first ones. Just think about that. We're all kin. Back to Adam and Eve. You can't change it. God told them, you, you, the, you are the mother and father of all people. You are the, the ones going to produce from you. It's going to go on. And, and of course, Jesus, you know, it went on and on. And thank you, Lord. But he promised way back in Genesis that they would, the seed of a woman would destroy the, uh, the, would destroy the serpent, the devil. The power to destroy the devil. And all over in the Old Covenant, they were always having feasts and, and, and sell the Passover. You know, they had the Passover lamb. They were killed on the 14th day of the 10th month. It's the same time Jesus was on the cross. And actually, um, the, even the time, Jesus was hung on the cross at 12. He, he was hung on the cross at 9. At 12 to 3, everything turned dark. 
and I think they said at three he he died. I believe, you know, I don't know, but it's very critical. It all went to the cross for all the way, all those hundreds of years, was taking us to the cross. The time that the cross would come up, it would come into effect. John made a beautiful statement. It was in the throne room of God. One of the elders before the throne cried out, Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is Revelation 5, 5. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. As John looked, he saw instead of a lion, in the center of the throne was a lamb, as if it were slain. The word John chose to use was A-R-N-I-O-N, and that's in Greek, explaining what he saw. It was like a little lamb, a little pet lamb that they were used to it, uh, dealing with back in Egypt. That's what John saw in Revelation when he saw the Lion of Judah became the lamb. And those around, the, uh, around him fell on their feet, fell at his feet and sang a new song. For he was slain and has been and has redeemed us to God by his blood. It's all the blood. That was John. That was from John. So the first pace of blood was spread. They sprinkle blood from a from a, a perfect animal. You know, it had to be clean. It couldn't have any spots, anything. They sprinkle. That was how they would that's how they used in the Passover. The first Passover, actually, the first time, and I want to read this. The first Passover was when they left Egypt. And they the Lord told them to kill a to kill a lamb. To put the blood on the doorpost so the death angel could not enter to their home. Don't ever forget that. The blood of Jesus Christ will deliver from the death angel. But he told them to eat the lamb. So when they left Egypt, the lamb was inside of them. And it's, I'm asking you now, when you leave Egypt, you will never leave Egypt unless you have Jesus Christ inside of you. They had the lamb inside of them and the blood. I'm asking you to think, do you have the Lamb of God inside of you? They had, they, they experienced the Lamb inside. They ate the Lamb. He told them to eat it in haste and go, and they did. So that was the first Passover. Jesus, Jesus uh, would break. Okay, let me see two. Exodus twelve seven eight, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. And over the top, the upper doorpost of the house, wherein they shall eat it, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with in fire, and unleavened bread, and bitter herbs they shall eat. That's all the communion for us today. That's what we do when we take the wine and the bread. So when they drank the, when they ate the bread, they served the bread was for healing. That's what I was, to, even back then, the bread is for healing. And the wine, of course, is, is makes atonement for our sins. To get you some, get you some grape juice. I just use grape juice. <clears throat> he was wounded for our transgressions. This is why Isaiah cried when he did it. Isaiah fifty-three. He was wounded for our transgressions. Get this. I want you to really get it in live in your head about our Jesus. He was bruised for my iniquities. He was a bruise from my iniquities. Do you understand? I had iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was on him. And with his stripes, I am healed. I bind that into everyone watching me that needs healing. He was wounded for your transgressions. So we repent of everything and ask you to cleanse us with the blood. He was bruised for our iniquities. Forgive us for our iniquities. Our father's iniquities. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. We forgive. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah cried that out because he realized he was looking at the Messiah when he cried that out. 
<clears throat> there's a, a wonderful scripture that I read I didn't fully understand over in Genesis 49 11 and it was talking about this going to come a time it, it's really worded funny but it, it's very powerful it says binded his foal f-o-a-l uh, unto the vine and his ass coat unto the choice vine he washed his garment in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes it's talking about Jesus this is Genesis 49 11. Jacob was saying there's a time coming which we're we are in this we're in that time when Jesus has come where there's going to be abundance of grapes with abundance of wine the spirit of God the richness of the word the is that it's going to be so plentiful it's like our clothes would be covered in it and we uh, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit it literally comes over all over you and and he he says um and re also it says in and your clothes will even be washed in wine washed in wine which is all the blessings and the things of the spirit in us it's going to be it and we live in that time jesus has come so we can do that we can we can you can have all of him you want it's whether you want to spend the time are you willing to give up life, your life, to find his life? I'm still in the process. I'm asking God even today to keep stripping away. Get me in the word and show me which way I need to go. Because, I don't, you know, a lot of times we kind of get lost trying to find our way in where we're supposed to go next or what we're supposed to do next. But the Lord knows what, we, what he has planned for us. And so just, you might have, you know, seek him with your whole heart. <clears throat> From the very beginning, God went to work to redeem us back. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned, there's a scarlet thread from Genesis to Revelation. You can never get away from the blood, ever. When you're looking at communion, it's called His Supper. He covers us in communion. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb without spot or blemish. The Holy Spirit always honors the blood. And, I, I, you know, I'm a real big on the blood covenant. Every Christian should study and understand the power of the blood covenant. Everything, see, the covenant is sometimes more, it, it, more than one person had to agree, and they both agree, and they had to keep it. One broke, it was undone. With Jesus, it cannot be undone. He made the covenant. He made the covenant. It can't be undone. Thank God. Thank God. He made the covenant for us. And it's the one, and it can never be changed. He honors the blood. That's why I said learn about the blood covenant. Everything he promises is in the blood covenant. Everything, Abraham's blessings are in that blood covenant. And all the promises listed are ours. And you have to, it is warfare. Everything. If you've repented and you've gotten forgiveness for your iniquities and your forefathers' iniquities, and if you married somebody and brought more iniquities in that was not the Lord's choice to start, well, then you've got to deal with it. The Lord has mercy, and he wants to forgive, and he wants to heal. But a lot of people have, are traumatized because they've married the wrong person, and God never told them to marry that person. They may not have even been a Christian. To know. You know, the Lord knows it all, but he knows how to redeem us back no matter what state we're in. And it's warfare, but it's through the blood covenant. You overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You t it's, your testimony, applying the blood, brings, brings the, the word of God into your life. And, and, and a lot of people have so much going on from generational curses that have never been dealt with. And then they've got, you know, things in their own life, things in the children's life, things in a lot of, there's a lot of divorce that's even in our family. And there's a lot of pain and all kinds of, God has the answer. And it's through the blood covenant to get you free, to set you free so you can go with your life free. And, and people... And the body of Christ, we've got to learn this, that we've got to love one another because when, when one needs help, there should be a whole group that you know where you are, they come around you, and, and you may be the one that needs the deliverance. I mean, you know, you may be thinking wrong. You need people around you to help lead you in the right way. I can't do it. You know, I've got, I'm right here. But everywhere you are, there's, there's, you find a place where you are at home with the Spirit of God 
and that you're home enough to know that you can release yourself to people to help get you free. Because the Lord has paid the price for us to get free. But it's warfare, and it's all like warfare. You're dealing with, it's called, he's called he in some places in the Bible. It's a, you've, you're in warfare with an enemy that, that is, he's not as powerful as Jesus, and he certainly can't stand against the blood, but you've got to take the armor and go after it. And, and the word of God is sharper than any devil. He, that's why when Jesus, um, in Genesis, God, G, God introduced himself, let's see, uh, the, and the first time he introduced himself is God, which means creative God, angels and trees. And the second time, Genesis 3, I believe, he introduced himself as Lord God. Now he's in the fellowship with all the humans. A fellowship. You need to look at that. Be, a Lord God means fellowship and, and sacrifice. And it, it, right there in Genesis, two, I believe it's 3, he starts setting the stage that he's Lord God and he's creator God and that he's the one creating us. So that's why when Satan tempted Jesus, how many hundreds of years later? He said to Jesus, he quoted this word, the word to Jesus, and Jesus said, it is written. You all probably say this. I'll say it is written because Satan can quote scripture, but God gives you the scripture that feeds him. You say, don't just say it is written, but make sure you go and defeat that enemy because when Jesus was faced with Satan, he said, it is written. And, and Satan came back and he went back with him again. It is written. And he said, Lord God. But it, it, and he said, your God, your God. He reminded Satan that he had been created by the Lord God. Right there. This is New Testament. That's why Jesus said to Satan, the Lord, your God, your God. Because he had, he had introduced himself back in Genesis where the devil had messed up everything. And he came and introduced himself in Genesis 1, 2 or 3 as Lord God, creator, fellowship, love, all that. He introduced who he was. So Jesus came right there and was repeating what he had said about what God had said about himself in Genesis. He had reminded Satan, he said, your God, the Lord, your God. Can you imagine Satan coming against him when Jesus knew God had created him to start with? It's, this is, it's an amazing, you need to get the word. It all blends together. It all ties together. It is, I get so excited reading the word. I, I get so excited. I just read over somewhere, and you know, we went through the tabernacle and about the Holy of Holies and the angels, two angels, and God's presence. It says in heaven, uh, that the uh, that God says between the two cherubs up there, His presence between the two cherubs. I just read that. It all is so amazing, and it's real, and it's alive. And no history bears it out. History bears it all out. It's so true. Jesus said, "He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I am abiding in him." I'm asking you tonight, are you eating him? Is he life to you? Are you getting life when you read the word? you stay in the word till he speaks to you? Do you ask him to speak to you so that there's life there? You've got to have him. He wants union with you. He wants a living, living union with each one of us. And I looked up the word abide. Because, listen, I'm going to read this again. This is Jesus talking. He that eateth my flesh and drinks my blood abideth in me and I am him. I'm asking you, are you abiding in him? And is he abiding in you? And then I'm going to tell you the definition of abiding so that you know what he's saying. In Greek, it means he's communing with you. He's not distant. It's very close. He's very intimate with you. It's like cement. Being cemented to the Lord. To live. To live with. To stay somewhere. Not going back. Stay somewhere. Co-resident. 
dwell, live in, lodge, and settle. Have you done that? Did you Do you identify with any of that? If not, you get in the word and you stay there till you are settled and you are identifying with it. He is alive. He is alive. That word's alive and it will change you forever. He's responsible, but he wants you to come along. He's looking. He's just waiting to see if you really want him. If you really want him to be, do you want him to direct your life? A lot of people are too busy and want to do their own thing. He, he's got plans for you and you will be totally satisfied doing what you're doing as long as you've got him in it. And then when things come up, the Lord will help guide you through it because we all walk through different things in life. He wants to call to remembrance. He wants us to recall the remembrance, his love, this deep love that was planned from Genesis that this woman would come and would bruise the head of Satan. And now it's been bruised as Jesus who came through that lineage, came through that lineage of Judah. Um, Joseph's fourth son, I believe, or Jacob's fourth son, Judah. And that through there came King David and Solomon and Jesus. It's all there for us to take a hold of. And actually, this this uh, Passover the, and taking communion, it's an everlasting covenant with the Lord. It's a blood covenant. It's everlasting. And that's where we celebrate him. And 1 Corinthians 5, 7, indeed, Christ is was our Passover lamb sacrifice for us. That's 1 Corinthians 5, 7. He was born to be a Passover lamb, to become, to become our high priest. We're priests. He's our high priest. You know, Aaron was the high priest. He had special things that the lesser priest didn't have. He had something so amazing. Um, and I've gone through all this. One thing he had holiness to, you know, to the Lord up here on his head, wore that holiness with blue ribbon, which is heavenly. And, uh, but there was, he had the breasts, the things over his shoulders and the 12 tribes engraved in these stones, engraved the names that were heavy. He carried the weight of, his, of the people. Jesus carries the weight for us. And, but in there, in the breastplate over his heart, was the U R I M and H U R M M I M, and I kept saying, Lord, what was that?" Because it was over the heart in the breastplate where these two sh stones came over where they were engraved. In over his heart was the, the, these two stones. They are stones, and it's so beautiful. So I've been researching, Lord, what were they? Is your room in, in H U and I've got it written down. I'll get to it here in a minute. But since the Lord brought it up, I'm going to bring it up now. It was stones that when they went, only the high priest had them. Only the high priest. When they went into the Holy of Holies once a year to carry blood, they went in twice. One Once they went in for the sins of the people and once they went in for the nation. And they sprinkled seven times, both times. Only the high priest once a year. But he had these two stones on when he had these, the, he took the, all the people in with him. The weight of it went in. These stones said they had light. That used In the Holy of Holies, there was no light. Only God's presence. You know, there was no light back there. And it was totally closed in. These stones had light. And he, the high priest, got revelation from the Lord from these stones. They got revelation and guidance from the stones. And it's those two stones. And only the high priest could, and they were very sacred. And that is a picture of us with Jesus. He gives us in here, it laid on his heart, everything in here is about Jesus. It laid, that stone's laid on his the high priest's heart. He was the only one that could have them. God gives us revelation. He gives us revelation as we read the word. Or he'll give us revelation because he wants us. Those stones represent the Holy Spirit. It was revelation and understanding and guidance. They got guidance how, how to, what to do and all through those stones. But they were from the Holy Spirit. Is that amazing? It's a picture of us with the Spirit of God in us. It's all oh, Jesus. I could just cry and never stop crying. 
He loves us. You know, it says that they would engrave the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, his people. Lord, bless Israel. Bless your people, God. Protect them. He engraved them in those stones, their names. I, he engraved us in his hand. It says, I, I looked up the two scriptures and I don't have a right here in front of me. Two places he says we are engraved in his hand. Your name, you, I'm talking, you are, if you know him, you are engraved in his hand. And he's not, you know, people aren't looking at his hand. We don't turn our hand out. You're engraved in his hand. You can't be washed off. You're engraved in him. And they, it's just like he had them engraved. It's so old, Jesus. Every bit of it. The high priest. Jesus is the high priest. And he's carrying the weight. Our weight. He loves us. I don't know if I can finish this. It's so real to me. I, I, I challenge everybody to start reading about the blood covenant because it starts in Genesis. It cost him his life. He was in glory. He gave up glory. He gave up his glory and came down here. So, Jesus, the Son of God, who is this Jesus? Everything was created by him and for him. Everything that exists is wrapped around him. He was the creator. All things were created by him. And they were created for him. He was before all things. By him all things exist. He holds it together. He's the head of the, of the church. All fullness dwells in him. Everything dwells in him. And down here we just begin to know him. We, have, we can have all the fullness of him. In him. By him. For him. He made peace for us through his blood. In him dwells all the wisdom and knowledge. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. We're complete in him. He's the head of all principalities and powers and so much more. Who is this Jesus? I'm sorry. He died for he died for me and he died for you because he loves us. Who can love like that? This is so true. He left heaven for me. He left heaven for me and for you. The word covenant in the Greek, this is what it means. When he made a blood covenant with us, it actually means Cut covenant, always with the shedding of blood. So he knew from the very beginning that he would have to shed that holy blood so I could be joined to him. I don't know that I can even finish this, y'all. It's so, it's so deep and so precious. He's so precious. I want you to get to know Jesus. Get to know him. I want to know more of him. Jesus, I want more of you. I want more of you. Strip whatever else you need to strip and fill me with it. With you, Jesus. These are the covenants. I want you to always know they were all blood covenants. Every covenant was made from Genesis. All was always a blood covenant. The Edemic was first. And then the Noah one. Where he sacrificed animals after he got off. And then the Abraham one was circumcision, and then the Mosaic, and then the David, David, 
and then the new covenant and the everlasting covenant. So it, this will be everlasting when we go out of here. Those are the covenants, and they were all sealed with the blood. And it was all pictures, four pictures of Jesus coming that would do it. It'd be the end of that. It was the end. Jesus paid the full price. There's no other way. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be born again and really born. I understood what Nicodemus said. How can I go back and be born again? Because I couldn't understand it. Until Jesus came in, I couldn't understand it. Where is it? The whole old covenant was a shadow of Jesus coming. The whole thing was, oh, everything in there. It's, a, it's somewhere in there is Jesus. It was a shadow, but he. it was all shadow so that when he came, they would recognize him, but they didn't. Uh, everything, they could have just looked. It was all a shadow of Jesus Christ. And he made sure he did that so when he came, they would know who he was, but they didn't know who he was. All scripture is, is, is inspired by God for doctrine, teaching, for reproof, for reproof and correction. John 5 says, Jesus talking to the Jews, uh, he made this statement. You search the scriptures for you believe you have eternal life and the scriptures point to me and yet you won't come to me so I can give you eternal life. I want to read this again because we've got people all over the world from all kinds of religions and the Lord is using this to bring people into the kingdom. It's John 5, 39. Jesus was talking to the Jews and he made this statement. You search the scriptures for you believe you have eternal life and the scriptures point to me and yet you won't come to me so I can give you eternal life. Jesus Christ is the only person, only, only aunt that can ever give anybody eternal life. He's paid a huge price. From the fall in the Garden of Eden. until the cross is all about the Lord. It's a shadow of the cross. It's a shadow of what God had planned for us. And how and why he blessed us to be living in this, this time period. And actually, the late, according to Matthew, the last generation. If 1948, when the Jews got, it's that generation. So we want, we're going to be standing for a righteous God and we're going to stand there washed in the blood. That's how we'll stand there, no other way. No other way. Only, only God is greater than death. From the beginning, deity knew he must suffer to redeem man back. From the very beginning, when he do, introduced himself really as Lord God, Satan tried so hard to destroy the seed so it never happened, but God made sure it made happen. God the Father entered into the blood covenant with man through Jesus Christ. God the Father gave up his son. Listen, he gave up his son down and, and the Lord and Jesus agreed with him, his only son. I want to just pick, there's one or two things. I, I'm not going to do this all because I want to, I want to pray. That's where, that's just about Adam and Eve. This Revelation 19, 30, he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And in his robe, and on his robe, and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
Luke 24, 44. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Luke, that's Luke 24, 44. Jesus said, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses. See, he goes all the way back. He wrote it. It was all about him. All of it. The Psalms. Yeah, I see him in it. The prophets and the Psalms. Jesus said that in Luke. John 5, 45. Jesus said, you referred to, you refused to believe Moses. He wrote about me. John 1, 45. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about. John 8, Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced to see it. All the way back to Abraham. The old covenant tells what is going to happen. The new covenant tells it did happen. And we're living in a time where we can testify to you that we have found, he has found us and we have found him. Thank you, Jesus, that I can say that. There wasn't a time that I could say that, but I can truly say I've met the master. Uh, let me just go through here real quickly and see. He wants to, he wants a presence, his presence in you and on you. He wants you to be aware of his presence with you. It's a continual presence if you're spending time with him. If he's, if he's abiding in you and with you, he wants intimacy with you. He's an intimate God. He was so intimate in all the details. He's intimate in all the details of our life. He wants to share with you. He wants us to keep coming to him. He was before all things, by him all things are made. I've, I've said that, but I want to say there's seven glorious results of abiding in him. There's a lot more, but these are the ones I wrote down. Your prayers will be answered. You may have to fast if you're healthy. You may have to have prayers to agreement. You pray the word of God. You bind the word of God into, you find and you bind the word of God into that situation. You bind the word of God, that's the living word, into that situation. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Bind the devil out and loose him back to the pits, back to the abyss, permanently seal him there and let Jesus deal with him. And you bind into them, through the name and the blood of Jesus, the promise. Your prayers will be answered. Your father will be glorified. Because you're bearing much fruit. If you're abiding in him, you cannot not do it. It's just going to happen. You'll continue in his love. You'll be very aware of his love. You'll remain joyful. Sometimes you'll get hit, but you'll come back. That joy will pop right back. But the presence is there. You'll love the brethren. A revelation, well, fullness of revelation will be coming to you from the Spirit. He says, I have chosen you that your foot, so your fruit will remain. And he said, and then he said, I'm saying, continue producing fruit. You will always be producing something for him. You'll be, you won't be, listen, he's taking you. You're watching me. There's not many people that will be interested in what I'm saying. He's pulling you into a walk with him that you never was, well, ever known was possible. And the world falls by the wayside. There's not one thing out here besides being with the body of Christ, being with the word of God, his presence, and my family. I, I long for nothing. I want to be in his presence. I want to be right in the middle of his perfect will for me. And I ask people to pray that all the time because I'm old and sometimes I get tired. You know, there's a, sometimes I get, I'm wondering, there's a, there's a spirit of God in me to tell everyone I can about Jesus. I had such a hard time finding him and he's so real and you know, it shouldn't be that way. 
If you were a young person and you've never felt love, it's hard to believe that someone has perfect love for you. It's hard for you to believe that he created you because you know you have a mom and dad brother in your life and you don't even know who they are. You know, somebody produced you. The Lord has perfect love for you. I don't care where you've been, what you've done, who you were. Your name, you, he's your father. He is your true father. John 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is full of grace and truth. In him was life. And he was the life, and, and his life was the light of man. So do you have his light in you? Do you have his light in his? He was, he was the beginning. The beginning In the beginning was the word John 1. He's a pre-existent word. He's a personal word. He's a creative word. He's a life-giving word. He's a light-giving word. He's a saving word. He's the incarnate word, full of grace and truth, and he's a gracious word. And that is all. You'll find that all in John 1, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 12, 14, and 16. John tells who he is right there. He says, abide in me, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Abide You can't be in abide if you're not the word. I'm not... It's nothing wrong with with listening to prayer. You need to be in the Word. Your eyes need to see the Word. The, Jesus sees that you're hungry to know Him. Get your Bible. Get to King James. Listen, there's some, I just read something is that like the engraved, like the name is engraved. I just read it to you in your hand. The other the other verse it says, I think written or something. That's different. It's engraved. It says engraved. It, it actually says two different words. One's engraved and one's other means the same thing. The one little word like that changes everything. You get to King James and always refer back. The, what the blood does. There's so much it does. But I'm just going to read a few things because it's yours if you're in Jesus. Actually, Hebrews 10, 16, you're made perfect because of the blood. And Hebrews 10, 19, the blood... Gives us boldness to enter into the throne room. The blood. You go through the blood into the throne room to the Father. Okay, the blood does. Demon powers are broken and there's no fear of death. And listen, when I when we went when I face God face to face and he's so holy two or three years ago, and he's in he's in covered, he's encased in this light like nothing. Like it's so white, bright, there's no words to describe the holiness. Demon powers are broken. There's no fear of death. I had no fear of death. No fear. And he just said, I'm, I'm not ready for y'all now. I'm not ready for you now. So there's no fear of death. I don't know. I don't even know when we went. We were up there, right? We went up. You don't have to fear death. It's the word imparted into us that brings life. It's all through the blood. Redemption, set free, loosed from Satan's hold through the blood. I, I've said the blood, I don't know how many times, before I even realized the significance of the covenant, I knew very early to say the blood because of that one scripture, you overcome Satan with the blood. I didn't know anything else. I would say at night and day if I knew I needed to be free from something. I wouldn't even go to bed. I took the word... But now listen, I have to tell you, I know it was Jesus working with me. He everything I went through is what is now I'm sharing. That's a, that's all I can tell you. When when you you purge by the blood, whatever is purged by the blood, the devil can't touch it. Unless you go back into sin. You receive what is yours through the blood. He gives you uh, the blood is under your charge. It's under your charge. You're joined, you know, you're joined to, to that. God supplies and we apply it. We apply the blood and God supplies. The blood washes away our sins. 
the blood cleanses cleans the clean cleans the heavens. And I didn't write down the scripture there. Old Testament. It's a copy of heavenly realities. It's what I wrote over there. I don't know where that is, but it's in there. Restores our soul. The blood restores. He, you know, the scripture says he restores our soul. That's your mind, your will, your emotions. I've, and I, last week or two weeks ago, I said the Lord told me to pray for someone that our reasoning was sanctified. Remember that? Because he sanctifies your body, soul, and spirit. And so I pray now that uh, we're all sanctified in our reasoning, in our plans, in our desires. Bind it into you. Get these scriptures in bind. You'll see amazing changes the Lord does. It may not be as but you don't quit praying till you get your answer. The blood sets you apart holy. Satan runs when you plead the blood. It makes him angry. I've had him scream at me. Don't say it. I've had demons scream at me so loud you could hear it all two blocks away. Don't say the blood. Covering the ears and you can't even pull the hands off of such supernatural demonic power. You just keep saying the blood. They'll come out. Perfect, perfects us forever. The blood makes you perfect. What it cleans out is perfect. The blood gives me permission to enter into the throne room. That's so amazing. Um, I, to, uh, I think I, I, to, I did share about you, about the two stones. That, that to me, is, it's called, here's how you spell it, U-R-I-M and T-H-U-M-M-I-M. It gives revelation knowledge. It was a light in that darkness. In the, it instructed the high priest what God wanted them to do. It gave the, helped them make decisions of the heart of God in things. And see, we have we don't have to have stones on us. We're he's in us. He is in us. He that we he doesn't have to carry us over his shoulder. The, we are his tabernacle carrying him. I just it's just so so amazing. Thank you, Lord. I've gotten a hold of myself, and I'm there's all kind. You might want to study sometimes the crowns that are in the Bible. There's all kind of crowns for Christians. I'm I'm not going to. This is an example, even back in the old covenant, about the blood and about Jesus. It's a picture, really, of Jesus. It was the two goats. The high priest had to get two goats to take away the sins of the nation. And one was a sin offering. And the high priest would lay his hands really hard and press all the sins in on that goat head and then kill it for the sins of the nation. And then the other goat they would take to the wilderness. And that other goat could not be set free until the one had paid the sins and it was accepted. It's the same thing for us. We are that goat. Jesus Christ took our sins at Calvary and he set us free. Back then they had to use animals because they didn't, you know, Jesus hadn't come. And that, that goat in the wilderness was set free when the sins were forgiven. The high priest did it. Our high priest forgives us when we ask, and we are set free. It's a picture. All of it, every bit of it is Jesus. I can't, we could never make this. There's no way you could ever make all this up. I'm, I'm finishing right here. I said he took the crown. Of, he had the crown of glory in heaven, and he came down here and took a crown of thorns for us. And There's a lot of, to do with the different um, things we go through, like perseverance, and uh, there's all kind of crowns. There's crowns that the Lord's getting. For some, there's a crown of glory. There's a crown. For, you need to study the crowns. I think there's, I, I did, I just looked at it a little bit, but not enough to realize much about it. That's all. I'm, that's all I'm going to say tonight. Okay, I could talk a lot about the headpiece and all that, but I'm not going to. We're, I'm going to close here. What time is it? What? 9.47. Good. That's so good. And I've got myself back together so I can keep going. 
I'm going to try to call your names before we start praying. Sure, honey, we will be praying for you for your healing. Actually, the Lord may call your healing out in a little bit. So I'm going to go to the top and come back down and try to call out everybody. I can't call out everybody's name, but I'll do the best I can. And if you don't hear from me that I've clicked on your name, it doesn't mean that I haven't. Sometimes I have to get them for other people because they don't let me get all of them over here. And I know we've got a lot of new people on. Grab a hold of Jesus and don't ever let him go. He Once you get him in you, he won't ever let you go. Just don't you let him go. He, he's there, but you, he can kind of get pushed back in a corner. And he wants to be a living part of your life. Brian from Oklahoma. Margaret Payne from Florida. I don't know. Christina from uh, South Carolina. Deborah from South Carolina. Deborah. <coughs> we have several Deborahs. <clears throat> Let me get a drink. Oh, now I don't want to call. Okay, I'm Margaret, Dr. Zoe, Cynthia Nolan, Jackson, Rachel, Catherine, Leah, and Marcus. Pete McGuire, I'm not going to comment. I'm just going to call your names, but I'm, uh, I want you to know we're so grateful for you following us and and coming with us and pray for us and we're and we're praying for everybody that comes on here. Logan Bowman, D Delisa Frick, Logan. We've got Alina, Rebecca Quinn, Will. Where she's from Colorado. Sonia Rourke Coon, Robin Rollins, Will, Margaret. Okay, Margaret, I guess I see Deborah, Leanne, David, Aguilar, Allison, and uh, Stephen, I'm saying his name, Allison. Leanne, Marcus, I'm expecting miracles. And, and De Deborah Pickering, um, Christina, Jason Andrews, that TKACS, thank you, Jason, Alina, Leanne, Marcus, Janice Campbell, James White, with the new people, we just so thankful you're with us. Everything's on YouTube. All of my teachings are back on YouTube under Master Touch Ministry, Alinda Blankenship. Rob and Steve Travis and um, Jennifer Mims. And their healings on most of them. And those healings are there. And people get healed later on watching those. Rebecca, Quinn, Robin, uh, Steve Travis, Beth Ann Lynn. Kim Hamby, Casey Conley, Janice Campbell. Um, yes, David, I'm praying for you. Cassie Con Casey, Cassie Conley, Janice Campbell, uh, Leanne Beth Ann, Ashley Danielle, Mary Ann Miller, Ashley, Steve Travis, um, Deborah Pickering, Dina Mitchell Payne. Ashley Daniel Parker, Mary Ann Miller, Jennifer Mims, um, Dina, Ashley Daniel, Robin Rollins, Patricia uh, A R A U J O. Thank, thank you for being with us, honey. Uh. Mary Ann Miller, if y'all have got your communion, if you don't, go get you something to drink and we're going to take communion. Brian, and the healings and communion. I'm thinking God's going to heal people tonight. Jason Andrew, Leanne, J uh, let's see, Leanne, Solomon, V A Z Q U E Z. Thank you, Solomon. Thank all of you. New, new ones coming on, and Jason, Andrew. Uh, so thankful for all the new people that are coming in. I know. Joe Davis, hi. Honey. Linda Jackson. Oh, I missed somebody. Leanne. Penny Flynn. Um, Dina Mitchell Payne. Oh, wait now. Okay. I believe I. Sure, Phil, sure, sure Phillips. 
Janice Camel, see they uh, they're popping up every now and then, so I I can't get any more, but there's more down there. So thank you, Jesus. I ask the Lord to bless every one of you mightily with the Spirit of God, the presence of God. When you go to bed tonight, you feel the presence of the Lord with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Go get you some. If you don't have, uh, just get any kind. If you got juice, something, get water and some bread. And we're going to read 1 Corinthians 11 and take communion together. And I'm asking, and we're agreeing that people are being healed tonight. Let's all agree. If you don't want to take communion, if you're a Christian, take communion. If you know Jesus, not ask him to, ask him to forgive you of your sins and come into your life and be real. Just do that right now. Get on your knees, cry for forgiveness. He, if you're, and do that until you know you know him. He's waiting on you to run to him. I know it's, uh, uh, okay. Okay, here it is. It's 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to anoint my head with oil, and I'm going to put my finger up there on the, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, and I'm going to put it right up here, and, and anybody wants to lay their head up there, I'm going to anoint you. I'll wait till you get back. I'm going to wait till everybody gets back. Right before, don't let me forget to do that, Lord. Okay, is, have we had time for everybody to get back? Because we're going to pray for it. Pray that we're just in taking communion, there's healing. So I'm asking the Lord to heal you. Y'all, everybody agree that anybody needs healing, they're getting healed in Jesus' name. The miraculous healing's flowing. Lord, I release by the power of the Holy Spirit into every life that needs healing that they are being healed tonight. You're doing supernatural miraculous miracles in homes all over the world, Lord, in Jesus' name. I'm going to click this off. There's something there. Let me get that off. Okay. Now, are you, I'm going to put a cross up here. I've got the cross on my head, and I'm going to put it on right here for you. Name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Receive communion and receive healing in Jesus' name. Okay. Now, I've got my this, and I've got my this. This is what I use every morning. They're um, flat crackers with nothing in them, and you just crack one, and I, I break it. So I'm going to give everybody time to pray for forgiveness. Oh, okay, Will, thank you for anointing your children because I'm believing for miracles tonight. Everybody bleed. I've got the Spirit of God all over. We're believing for miraculous miracles tonight in homes, in families, in lives, personal, miraculous supernatural creative miracles deliverances from demonic spirits of infirmities and sicknesses and diseases we bind every i'm going to go ahead and pray before we do communion father i am i am coming to you with and all of us are coming to you because we love you and we trust you and we believe you we believe your word and and, and this is your supper lord jesus and you do heal in your supper it's, it's healing is in in your in the communion with you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, under the authority of the Holy Spirit and in, in the, the power of the cross and the power of the blood, the written word, and because you are in me, I am praying now for the body of Christ that's following us, that's in this group. And I thank you that it is written that we overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I'm quoting this, for, and they can quote it in their home, that it is written, by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed in the name of Jesus. That it is written, you send your word now, right now, and you heal us. You send your word and you heal us. That's what it says. You said, not to forget all your benefits, that you heal all of our diseases, and you bless our life, that, that the blessings of the Lord is on us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the blood of Jesus Christ delivers us from all demonic activity now. So I bind up, I bind up all principles and powers. 
I bind up all generational curses. I repent. I ask for forgiveness, Father. And I ask you to forgive, Lord, the generational curses and iniquities and, and demonic judgments and any kind of uh, demonic uh, uh, agreements that are hanging around in any family. I'm, I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to for, we, I bind them up and I break the powers and cast them out now in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive. We forgive. We ask you to forgive. We reverse every curse. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we reverse every curse back to the pits permanently, and we release the word of God. The blessings that were purchased at Calvary for each one of us, the blessings that Abraham left for each one of us that are in the blood covenant, we receive everything the blood covenant bought for us, Lord, and I bind it into every life, every home, now, in the name of Jesus, and I ask everybody that's watching me say, Amen. We agree. Lord, we are agreeing for miraculous turnarounds tonight. For uh, people that are addicted to be set free. Addictions have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, demonic spirits of infirmities have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lesbian devils have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Recluse spirits have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Infirmity devils have to go now in the name of Jesus. I am applying the blood of Jesus, the word of God. I bind into you that by his stripes you are healed. That it is written, the blood is delivering you from every demonic attack and the demon. Right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we're taking communion. We thank you and I'm going to read it, Jesus. I'm going to read this with, and we as a body, we are your body here. We tell you first how much we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for every family, every family, every person, individual that's watching this, that they are getting blessed and that they'll start taking communion, Lord. It keeps us connected, alive, always thinking about you and what you purchased for us in Jesus' name. And when he had given thanks, this is Jesus, he he took the bread and he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So I'm going to break it and eat it, and you do the same thing. You might have light bread. It doesn't matter anything. Lord, we've all asked for forgiveness, so there's no judgment on us. Thank you that you've forgiven all of us of our sins, Lord. Even where we're in bondage, Lord, and we can't get free, we're not strong enough. Forgive. We thank you you're forgiven, and you're dealing and helping that person to come to get free in Jesus' name. And then he took the cup, and Jesus said, after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And Lord Jesus, are we thinking of you tonight? So, Lord, I thank you for releasing people from demonic activity, demonic bandages, and spirits of infirmity, sickness, disease, cancer. All of that, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we have asked for forgiveness because it goes on to say, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. His death both purchases for us. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, if you've repented, you're worthy, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a land, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the body of Christ. And it goes on to say that many are weak and sickly among you, and some have even died. But once we repent, rather you, it's some people in bondage, addictions, and they can't get out, but they've asked for forgiveness probably a thousand times. You just keep asking for forgiveness and deliverance. The Lord sees your heart. It's all about the heart. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you for sharing communion with me. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you're healing. You're doing supernatural, miraculous, like creative miracles. Children, Lord, heal the children. We, we supernatural, Lord Jesus, supernatural. We can't do it. We do, we know you can, and we're thinking, thank you, the Holy Spirit for going in. Like I literally see the like a wind, whirlwind somewhere in somebody's home right now. Maybe more than one, like swirling. So lift your hands. If you feel the Spirit at all, lift your hands. Somebody's got the Spirit swirling in their home. He's coming in like a wind, like a swirling wind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's followed and stays with us. Thank you for our friends around the world. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a lady in Pakistan. Her name is um, Rachel and John, I believe. I forget. She's asked me twice to come there to Pakistan. And I can't, I, there's not, I'm, I can't go. I just can't go. But I'm asking the Lord if there's a way that I can connect with her live this way because she has thousands and thousands of people in her. She says it's to save Pakistan. And she, you know, this is like a year or so ago, she sent me a thing and she sent me another one this week. And she interprets. She speaks good English and she interprets, interprets into their language. And I, I just don't, and I know a lot of, it's just, you know, you just pray God's trying to reach the multitudes. And I pray this, that she gets this and can even use it even. So Father and Jesus, am I bringing all of us into the throne room? And I thank you for any healings, deliverances, anything else you have for any of us. I am an open book. I ask you, I thank you for loving me and my family. Thank you for keeping all the families safe, Lord. Thank you for Israel, for protecting Israel, that you put a safeguard around Israel, that no weapon formed against them can prosper, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And America, that you put a safeguard around America, that, the, that no enemy can prosper here in Jesus' name. Sign your sinus is being healed. Somebody's sinuses. You just say thank you, Jesus. Start praising him. Someone's sinuses are being healed right now in Jesus' name. Something to do with ammonia. There's a high level of ammonia in your body. You know who you are. The Lord's healing that in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For anything you want to do, Lord, I'm here. I'm, I'm just here to, to, to release what you have for your children, for all of us. There's a bottleneck. Now, there's something that somebody knows a bottleneck. The Lord's removing it. I don't even know. You know what it means, a bottleneck. God's taking care of the bottleneck in Jesus' name. Start praising him. He's taking care of the bottleneck. Someone has aspirations to be a songwriter. And, and, and it's going to be Christian songs. It's going to be things about the Lord. And it's going to be like po poetic. It's almost going to be like poetic from the Spirit. He's got his hand on you. You do whatever you have to do to seek him. Because this is something, give me that, that's big in Jesus' name. And the enemy may try to stop you, but you're not to let him. And we cover that in the blood of Jesus. Thank God for birthing it completely in Jesus' name. The sciatica is being healed. Someone's sciatica is being healed. Or maybe several. A lumpectomy is not going to be cancer. It, you'll be free. It's not cancer. It may be now, but it won't be when they take it out. I don't know what it is now. But the lumps are not cancer in Jesus' name. When they take them out. Insomnia is leaving in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
someone's very frantic and the Lord's putting peace on you. He is just settling down on you and giving you peace. I see rib cage, a rib cage. I'm not sure what it is, but the Lord's healing somebody's rib cage. I see ribs. It's more than one. I see ribs. I don't know if something's out of place in your spine. Where's the Lord to totally heal that in Jesus' name? Oh, let's see. Thank you, Jesus. Anything to do with the digestive system? Anything to do with the justice, so just, just thank God for healing you. Totally healing you. Scoliosis is being healed. The Lord straightened up someone's back. T perfectly straight. He's going back on insomnia, so there must be several people with that. We command you to sleep and have peace. He gives his beloved sweet sleep, and I bind that into you permanently in Jesus' name. Someone has a fear of a cardiac arrest. And the Lord says he is the strength of your heart. And to, to, you're not going to have, you, I don't know who, the, we bind the fear off you to start with. And don't even claim it. Say it is written by his stripes, my heart is healed. And, he's, and the word says he is the strength of your heart. That is the written word. He, so we bind that into your heart and we bind a long life on you that he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. And I bind the spirit of fear off of you and I bind the helmet of salvation on your head so that enemy won't torment you like that in Jesus' name. A broken rib is being healed. Some kind of blotched surgery. <laughs> a blotched surgery. God is taking care of that blotched surgery in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. That has to be a miracle of some kind. Thank you, Jesus. There's a person on there that's watching me, and you always feel inadequate. And that's a demonic stronghold. And so in the name of Jesus, we're all agreeing that spirit of inadequacy is bound and broken off of you and that you it's bound back to the master of it that sent it and we closed every door permanently we closed the portals we wash that area of your your thinking your brain your emotions we wash it in the blood of jesus we close every door permanently and we release freedom to you right now in jesus name in jesus name cancer of the lip is being healed cancer of the lip is being healed by morning, you're going to even see a change by morning. And I see nodules all up and down someone's spine. Nodules, and the Lord's removing the nodules. Actually, if you start moving around, he's, he's already touching them. It's nodules. I saw them all up and down the spine. Thank you, Lord God, for this miraculous, these miracles. Praise you, Jesus. Someone's in an identity crisis. Identity crisis. Lord, just bring them out of settle them down, stabilize them, and let them know who they are in you. Get them to you, Lord, and just speak to them. We put peace on them in Jesus' name. A torn meniscus is being healed. A torn meniscus is being healed. Cartilages. Cartilages. It's just cartilages. Lord, I'm praying for every joint of anybody that's listening or ever will listen that needs cartilage in their joints. I am thanking you that you're supernaturally infusing their joints with cartilage. In Jesus' name, miraculously. In Jesus' name. Ears, ears are being healed. Ears. What else, Lord? What else? Lord, is there anything else? 
I heard this, but something caustic. I think that's something mean like poison or caustic. The Lord, he's given me that before, but I didn't get anything with it. So I'm just saying anybody dealing with something called caustic, the Lord is giving you wisdom how to deal with this. And I'm asking him to protect you and heal you in Jesus name. I'm not sure what the caustic, it sounds like caustic is something maybe like a medicine is not, it's not good for you or something poor. I'm not sure. Something caustic. I ask the Lord to heal you, deliver you, and that you have no residual results from it. In Jesus' name, that you're totally healed. In Jesus' name. The small intestines are being healed. Small intestines are totally being healed. And something's being ratified. That somebody's been waiting for something. It is being ratified. This week it will be ratified in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, don't let me miss anything you have for somebody. Two, TB, tuberculosis is being healed in someone's lungs. Gout is being healed. Gout, we command, we command all these things to go permanently. We're command, we bind these things back to the, to the master, back to the abyss. We closed every door. We command not, not any of can ever come back there, forever forbidden to come back. And we wash you in the blood of Jesus and we close every door. So nothing can come back and replace these things. We ask the Holy Spirit to fill every area in Jesus' name. And just to saturate all of us in your blood, Lord Jesus. In our homes and our children, our mates, until Jesus comes. Everybody come into our bloodline until you come, Lord. We bind into the blood covenant in Jesus' name. Okay, this is a locksmith. I have to say what the Lord gives me. I don't understand this. There's a locksmith watching us. And the Lord's going to do something very special for you this week. It's something you've been tearing and uh, something. The Lord's, the Lord's going to do something very special for you this week. A locksmith in Jesus' name. Anything else, Lord? Don't let me miss anything you have for anybody, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Someone with terminal cancer, the Lord is supernaturally healing you. Terminal cancer is being supernaturally healed. And whenever you receive any of these things, please let us know. Like Jason let us know that he was delivered immediately from... Claust not claustrophobia, but something like that. He was healed immediately, and he came back two or three times to make sure that week to let us know it was him that got that deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Crohn's disease. Wow. I almost said Crohn's disease is being healed. Crohn's disease is leaving your body now. These are all permanent. We ask the Lord to repair, renew, fix whatever's wrong in all our bodies and to heal us, totally heal us in Jesus' name. An embolism is being healed. An embolism is leaving your body right now in Jesus' name. Wow. Traumatic brain syndrome. Traumatic brain. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. You're healing this person with traumatic brain injury syndrome or injury, whatever it is. Lord, you're healing that. Thank you, Lord, for these miracles. Miraculous miracles. Thank you for communion, Lord. Thank you for every person here watching. 
Thank you for their lives. Thank you for blessing them. God, those that are waiting for the answer. If I didn't call it out, I'm, I'm believing with you that you're healed. Just say, renounce it and command it to go and say, Jesus, thank you for healing me. I'm agreeing with you. And for your children that they're being set free, being made whole. And where they're bound and 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 bound up and can't get for God, we thank you. You're bringing the the lost kids back home, the children home, that you're causing them to hunger and thirst after righteousness, that you're causing them to want to be close to their family again, that you have birthed something new in them, and that you're making homes and families whole again in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for move of your spirit by God Almighty, and that you do something that man that we cannot do, that you're fixing it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Unless he gives me something else, <laughs> I've got it. We just thank you, Lord, for all these miracles, miraculously. We, I release them. I release them to you now, in Jesus' name. And I thank the Lord for confirming these words around the world, renewing people, strengthening people, reviving your people, quickening us, restoring us, just energizing us with the, from the kingdom. From your kingdom, Lord, let it just energize us with life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, immerse us in your spirit, Lord. Immerse us in your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we yield. We yield to Jesus. We ask you to guide us, talk to us, speak to us. Open doors for us, close doors. Get, keep us in the perfect will of the Father. In Jesus' name, keep us there, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Someone's faint-hearted. The Lord's going to lift you up out of that. Yes, don't be faint-hearted. The Lord's lifting you up. Start praising him. Praise him, praise him. That's, I'm not getting anything else. Thank, I, I mean, I thank God for everything he gave me. And somebody's getting them. Somebody's receiving them. And I thank you, Lord, that you you don't waste time and your word is true and you do what you say you're, you're doing. And I'm trying to be obedient. So thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for, for all of our friends. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name. Sure, I see your name, honey, and Christina. And Linda Jackson. Yes, Linda. Saint Jason, Andrew. Insomnia. Jason, we agree with you. Everybody agree that insomnia is leaving Jason right now. The name that we command your brain to settle down, be at peace, and you start sleeping. In Jesus' name. And segmental di dystonia. We command it to go. We command the root cause of it to go. We command whatever's damaged to cause it to go in the mighty name of Jesus permanently. Lord, we break it up and cast it out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And the ones addicted and the children that need such miracles, Lord, that you might miraculous, miraculous miracles, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, we command all bleeding to stop. We command all bleeding to stop right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, Margaret, in Jesus' name. We command bleeding to stop and you be healed in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, and the pain. Take the pain, Lord. Miraculous, do surgery on it. Just take, just, just stop at her, stop at her, start at her head, Lord, and go all the way down and heal Margaret. And from all the stress she's been under and all, and her son, in Jesus' name. Thank you. I want to thank all my friends, all the new ones that have been on. I just praise the Lord for you. I thank the Lord for this uh, opportunity to just sh share with the, uh, you. And um, I'm just so thankful. I thank God for your prayers. And I will be praying for you. And I do. Re I remember a lot of you just by what I just saw. And I will be praying for you. I love you. I ask for the Spirit of God to overtake you, to fill you, to, to just rest on you and, and revive you, that the Lord revives his people again in Jesus' name and sets us on fire with joy, joy, his joy, the joy from the Lord. Lord, bubble up in us, bubble up in us, Lord, in Jesus' name. I will, what time is it? I know it's getting late. Oh, Lord, it's 1021. I love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
And I don't know when I'll be back, but we'll be, I will be back. But I always try to put it out that day or the day before that I'm coming on. So just share this if you feel like sharing it. And just know that you're deeply loved. And Karen Morgan, I see that. And I see you, honey. I bless you in the name of Jesus and Allison. And listen, Bibles.com. I've got Allison. It's all over the world now. It's 110 nations. And they, I've, I, when, they when they message me, I tell them and I tell them to share it with people in other nations. This is how the word's getting around the world. It really is. It's an amazing what's happening. Bibles.com is almost in 2,000 languages. It is free to download on your phone. If you know anybody anywhere, tell them and tell them if they know anybody in another country to tell them. It is free. Please help us get the word of God out because I cannot tell you the hundreds that have come in on my messengers that have no Bibles. They may have one page of a Bible, one page. And, the, and they'd be the only one with the phone that they can, it's a, you would not believe. But if they can get, one person can get the Bible, they can write down a chapter and share it or whatever, or take a picture and share it. Just help us get the word around the globe. There are millions of people that do not have a Bible. I just know from what's coming in on my site. But they are, they're texting me back and thanking me and say, yes, yes, thank you. So you, we, we sit here with Bibles. Do you understand? It's the word of God that saved me. It was the word of God that brought me to salvation. Reading it. You've got to have the word. It is the living word. It is called the living word. And it will change you forever. So uh, I just didn't realize until all the foreign countries started coming in and asking for Bibles, how critical, how critical. They don't even know the name of Jesus. Help tell it. I'm asking everybody watching me to share it. Share it. Anytime anybody texts you and thinks, share this. Do you know somebody? Share it. You don't know who needs a Bible. A lot of people told me they've never even seen a Bible. They're everywhere. So share it. Bibles.com. And be sure to tell them it's free to download in almost 2,000 languages. And the list is there. They can find it. And a lot of people in Pakistan, I can't tell you how many people have found it. Allison, Allison is responsible for sharing that with me. And I've asked everybody I share it with that they're responsible to share it with people. I love you. How, the Lord's doing his work. Oh, my. And you're part of it. If you pray for ever pray for me, you're part of everything going on. Thank you, Lord. I love you. Just take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Praise, praise, praise your way out of everything. Praise. Praise in the blood. Pray, praise in the blood and thank the Lord for getting a hold of my emotions so I could finish or uh, halfway finish what I was going to share. I love you. Bye bye.